Okay. We're live. All right, huh? <laughs> um, I completely just blanked out on what I should say. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the ArtCast. I am filling in for Scott. Um, I'm Joshua Kemble, and I am here with Jeff and Kevin Cross and Jeff Le- Le- I can't do your last name, Jeff. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, Everybody uh, knows who I am. Laherty or Laferty? I can't. It's Laugh. Lafferty. It's Laugh. It's Lafferty. Okay, Lafferty. Laferty. Um, yeah, and we're just basically uh, gonna hang out and draw and probably discuss um, the idea, the topic I was thinking of this week. Um, particularly because Kevin and I were kind of in an interesting conversation on our commute to work. Is, those of you who've been like following Kevin's podcast or the art cast, like would know that um, Kevin and I commute together to a full time kind of day job as graphic designers. And so on our way to work, um, we were just getting in this long discussion and about how we used to feel about the idea of art for art's sake, like the Van Gogh idea of like artists just making art, whether it gets out there or not, whether it makes money or not, and our perceptions have changed um, recently. And so that's, I, I just thought it might be a really interesting topic. So I don't know. But um, so that's going to be the topic, hopefully, for today. So what are you guys up to? What are you working on? I'm working um, on the Monkey Mind Friends just... show. Sorry. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> you go ahead. Oh, I'm just working That's on my comic, yeah. the Monkey Mind French show, just starting to ink a page. And I am working on just a painting that I started like a week ago. It's for like a patron, so just kind of a fantasy type thing. Cool. Awesome. I'm so working. On- what's the deal with? How come Scott? Or sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna like change the subject though. I was gonna I was gonna like wonder where Scott is. Yeah. I do wonder where Scott is. Where is Scott? Well, I do he's, know he's, it's some nefarious thing, right? Yeah, I do know that he is going to be here in Southern California on Saturday, and we just exchanged phone numbers via text. So I will be seeing him Saturday. There might be video on one of either my channel or. His channel or both. Yep, that's that's wild. So, like, is Scott going to move into that the same house with you guys, or what? Are you <laughs> going to drive him to work too? Or? Yeah, we're starting a bullpen. <laughs> then we're just going to have a bullpen, and I'll pull up in here and drop it. This is the new house of ideas. Nice. See. <laughs> cool. Artist flop house. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure uh, Josh's <laughs> wife and kid are going to be real happy. Exactly. I mean, they're, <laughs> we're just overjoyed by that idea. <laughs> but um, uh, I think Scott's actually just a secret agent. That's what I I, I really think. Secret agent? <laughs> yeah. He could be a spook. I could, I could believe that. Yeah. He's a secret scientist. So what were you going to... Yeah. So what are you wa- working on, Josh? I didn't mean to interrupt earlier. Oh, no worries, no worries. Um, so I'm working on quarterly stories, um, page 38, and I'm just uh, working on some pencils right now. So pencil in a page, and working on this panel over here. I got to do some backgrounds and trees and apartment buildings and stuff. So yeah, yeah. Ah oh, man. Um, so anyhow, so the thing that was interesting to us about like the topic of like art for art's sake is like when I was younger, um, I used to kind of feel like uh, like artists shouldn't do art for art's sake, but that's like a fiction um, about artists that artists just should be broke and make art. And I just thought it was ridiculous when I was younger. People like, well, artists should all make a living. And if you're not selling your work, like you're selling yourself short, that kind of thing. But that's before I started selling a lot of art, and my perception kind of changed a little bit. But I kind of want to hear like what you guys think about that, like the idea, like of like art for art's sake, like just making art to make art with no objective other than just make something good. I'm curious what you, I don't. Know. I just thought that might be. Well, my my take on it is that um, having 
you know, day job, however, you know, temporary it is at the moment, is that it's kind of like I still want to make money for my art. You know, I still want to sell these comics when when they're done and stuff like that. But currently, the worry has gone because money's coming in from something else. So it's it's a bit less stressful, more kind of more fun to make the art because I right now I don't have to bank on it, you know. Yeah. I mean that's that's still the ultimate that. that's still the ultimate goal though. So that's still in the back of my head is how do I get back to that place where I'm you know banking on it but but you know I mean I've talked ad nauseum on my channel and on these art casts and stuff about how what that means is not going back to freelance it means making money off my own art do you know self-directed stuff which I'm pretty far away from at the moment but it's still still a goal yeah next yeah <laughs> <laughs> what, about you, Jeff? what about you um you think it's a waste of time to make art for, for, for no profit <laughs> No, I definitely don't think so. Um, but, I, you know, like, going back to what Kevin said, I, I can see his point because there there is definitely that relief, I think, when you – because I've been on both sides of it, like, kind of going broke doing art and getting a day job and being like, oh, thank God we have money again. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then also the whole thing of, like, where I'm sick of working and I'm out the door and I don't care if I'm broke. You know, <laughs> like, thank God I'm not working anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so – I mean, I, I see, you know, I, I've felt that at different times where I'm like, God, thank God I got a paycheck, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, back to, like, the thing of, like, the, the question you were saying about, like, is it worth I, – I totally think it's worthwhile because I think that, um, you know, that's what, like, every one of us, even, like, if you were kind of scoffing at it when you were younger, I think that's what every one of us wants to do. None of us kind of come in and go, like, they when we look at, like, what's going on in like art you know the art world or whatever and and just sort of like think that we want to go work for those people you know what I mean we might think that but I think we all what we want to do is we want to come in and make that cool stuff that like gives us that feeling you know what I mean that feeling uh, that that stuff gives us yeah and so I think you know it's like the the base whatever you want to call it, like it's like that base inspiration to create that cool thing that's inside you, and that that doesn't have anything to do with money. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah I think that I think that you know I don't know how to phrase it. You know what I mean? It, it's like I <laughs> it's just I mean it's like the it's like the start. So I mean you know, I think it's totally worth it to do it, but I mean it's it's so hard to figure out how to do it though. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's all I got to say. No, I mean... <laughs> Show over. So that's it. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, like... I, so, so one of the things that kind of started changing my perception was, like, um, like when I started straight out, of, like, straight out of art school, I, like, was working, just doing, like, education, art, and I don't... I'm sure you guys have done educational art, so you know <laughs> what that's like. But it's, like... It was just soul crushing, but I was also younger and like really just like wanting to like I felt like my stuff could be better and I could do stuff that's like handy to not done with the Illustrator and I was really like into like just cheesy pop art, which I still am into all of these things, but like so I, I started doing like t shirts and stuff like that and eventually did the like flip off the manager and leave the the workplace and like the day job cool. and I freelance, you know? And I did that for like ten years, like well, more than ten years, like just doing freelance. And and it got to a point where it was like I was getting work for my style and stuff like that. Um, but what I found was like actually it was like for me it was kind of soul crushing because like I, I realized like I, I and I think I've talked about this with you guys before, kind of, but the idea is like I wasn't really making art anyway. Like, I was making stuff for other people in my style, but it was never quite what I wanted. Like, it wasn't my full vision. 
So that's where, like, I think, like, 10 years of that kind of changed my perception where I'm, like, I don't know, like, right now I'm working on something that I know is good, um, which is a weird thing for me because, like, when you're younger, I think you're a younger artist, like, you, you don't know if what you're working on is good, you know? I don't know. It, it's not that I you know it's, like, great. I just know it's good. And that's that's a weird change, and it also brings out this, like, hunger to just make it, even if, like, other people don't connect. Like, I feel like it's still worth it, you know? Which is kind of a weird change. Like, for me, it's, it's a really recent change, because, like, I used to say, like, if you're making stuff, just sell it. And don't get me wrong, I'd be happy getting paid doing it, but I still feel like, in a weird way, like, I don't know, I, I feel like it's actually a little better for me, like, it's some of the best stuff I've made because I'm not really thinking about, like, who's my target market? You know, like, who am I going to market this to? Who am I going to sell this to? I'm more thinking about, like, how do I tell this story in a really good way? And how do I do the art in a good way? But, I, I mean, you know, you guys are working on personal projects, too. I just, I don't know, I think it's an interesting topic because I think a lot of younger artists might actually feel kind of like, they might be like me and be kind of cocky about that. Like, you need to be making money off of everything you draw, you know? I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely felt like that. I mean, you know, kind of one of the reasons why I started doing the 100 Days of Making Comics in the first place is because I was just making art for cash. Yeah. And, and it was like, you know, and that's fine, except for it wasn't cash that I was generating, and other people were holding the, you know, pulling the strings, and uh, there was a lot of design by committee, people who aren't artists, you know, it just yeah, and it it was a bit soul crushing, you know. Um, but the thing I think uh, I see a lot of younger artists who kind of come into, you know, freelancing or you know, maybe they'll get a an in house job, but usually that's kind of unlikely these days. Um, it's it's uh they they seem to go for like oh hey you know I just got this job for you know Sony. Or something like that. I made it, you know, and or I got this job at Marvel for a little bit. I made it, you know, and like um, I can't, I don't remember if you have Josh, but me and you know I know me and Jeff have done stuff for Marvel in different capacities, and we didn't make it, <laughs> you know, and so you start, yeah, you you know you eventually feel like you're you're part of someone else's system, and you're just a, a pair of hands, you're just a tool that they're using. And um, and it's taking away from your the stuff you're passionate about, and not necessarily always paying a decent enough wage to warrant you being away from what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I felt I definitely felt that way, and it's funny because when I was younger, I did like any time I'd bag a bigger client, I did actually. I I was guilty of that. I'd be like, oh, I made it. And then, like, a week later, I'd be like, nope, still broke. <laughs> like, yeah. or, or, or just, nope, still hunting. Right. You know? And you're like, oh, I thought that was it. I thought that was, like, you know, yeah. as you got there, you know. Like, yeah, where's my, where's my free ride? Exactly, yeah. Isn't this the door that just opens and magically gives you food and provisions? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, so something I wanted to bring up about doing art for art's sake and I've said it, be, you know, before. I think we've all said it before, but it, I think it always bears repeating because who knows who's gonna listen to this? It might be their first time, yeah. like uh, Jim Shooter always said. But um, is that when you do <laughs> art for when you do art for art's sake, that usually tends to be the stuff that you get job offers from and attention from. Yeah. And you know, and, and as a younger artist, for some reason I didn't put those two together until, yeah. until I got a bit older and then I used to be kind of timid about asking clients like what, I don't know why I was timid about this, but I was, like what on my portfolio made you want to hire me, you know, what, what spoke to you on the portfolio and, um, and then, you know, after I find, I, you know, I don't know what it was, like I, I thought maybe I was going to rock the boat or something if I said that, I don't know why, but, but and then come find out, it's it was always personal work, stuff that I did for art's sake, um, and 
it was never stuff I did from other for from other clients that ended up on my portfolio. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'd agree. Like, cause um, I I remember like when I was a student, I'd look through like design annuals, right, and be like, oh, these guys got in design annuals. And it must be because they did something for this magazine, you know, that's listed on it. And then like ten years later, I got in design annuals, and the designs were all like stuff. I just did that. I was like, that's a funny idea. I'll draw it and put it on a t-shirt, you know? And, like, that stuff was the stuff that got, you know, attention and work. Um, whereas, like, the other stuff just kind of, like, I don't, and actually that's the only stuff that really holds up that I still feel, like, proud of, you know? Like, it was the stuff that was like, oh, I came up with that idea, art corrected it, did the whole thing, you know? Because mm -hmm. um, I think when other hands, like, get involved, it, it's just it inevitably, even if it's a good product you're making, it's just inevitably you don't feel full ownership over it, you know? But I don't know. I mean, maybe that's just a cartoonist thing. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. There's there's always jobs that have come in that sound good and everything. And then, you know, I think, well, I'm going to do this, like, really kick-ass job. And then after, like, you know three rounds of roughs find out that oh they don't yeah. they liked my style but they don't want it, me to work in my style or yeah. or that you know they want to thumbprint it so much where you know you might have a color scheme or something like that that really has an emotional impact or you think so but for some reason the the um i don't know the the sales rep's husband or wife doesn't like that color they like they like brownish yeah. green instead of orange that you picked. Yeah. And, it, and then it doesn't work with what you're doing, so you have to do all the other color, redo all the other colors, then you do, you redo all the other colors to fit that one color that their spouse liked better, and then they don't understand why you changed all the other colors, and so then you have to do a rough to show them what it looks like with that, and then they go, oh, and so you've wasted all this time yeah. that you could have just been like, you know, hey, look, you hired me because I'm a professional at this, so let me do my job. And and then that ends up being time taken away from your personal art for art's sake stuff that actually ends up paying off more than client stuff in the long run. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yeah. I hate that when you're, like, trying, you know, like, with the changes, because I always feel like I'm making it worse. Yeah. Like, not, you know, they're, like, making me do something that I, you know it's not going to be as good or whatever, and then you're it just it's just so disheartening because you're like <laughs> now I'm making it worse, you know what I mean? I'm making it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't do well I think with with calling but I don't know. That's just that's just hard. It, I I don't think it ever gets easy, and like um, I think there've been a few people like you know I, I've had a few <laughs> clients in the past that have that were like decent records and. They were a lot more pleasant to work for because they suggest things, and then in the end, I'd be like, "Oh, that is better," you know. That yeah. that's rare, but I think yeah. you where it was like, "Okay, I'll, I, if all my clients were like that, I probably wouldn't have paid it," <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. At the end of the day, I feel like um, the the thing I like about like the, the comic I'm working on right now is if I am like wanting to push myself as an artist. And like, just mess with like typography, and like try a weird typeface that I saw by like the Sanborn Map Company, and like from 1812 that I saw that looks cool. I can incorporate that and see if I can do it in my own work, and I don't have to like get approval from some board or you know some person. I can just do it, and I'm the client, so it's like more like, okay, does it? And and for me, it's just more like the the bar, like, does it look good? Like, honestly, does it look good? Because sometimes I'll think it'll look good and then do it, and it's like, okay, that was bad. But I like that freedom to be able to, like, fail and to be able to fail on your own terms. <laughs> you know? I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Are we going to say something, Jeff? Oh, no. Go ahead. Uh, oh, I, I was going to say, I'm just... This might be a little bit off topic, but in art school, um, and it kind of used to be like this when the illustration business was different, 
at least for me anyway, when it worked a lot better. Um, I had this teacher who said, like, oh, you know, the, one of the best things about clients is you get to experiment on their dime to make your work better. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I think I experienced that in the beginning when things were a little bit better than they are now. But um, over the past, like, two or three years, it was, <laughs> like, I couldn't experiment at all. There wasn't any freedom because nobody wanted to spend the money for for art. They just wanted something done. Just something done, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. Um, I... I think also there's a thing that happens too when you level up a little bit as an artist because it's like, you know, when you're entering in, a lot of your first work's totally an experiment because, like, That's I've true. never worked on this before, but I'll pretend I have to get the client, you know? Yeah. And then you're kind of making it up as you go, and then you're failing or succeeding or whatever, and you're learning and adapting. But then you've been at it for, like, ten years, and you're like, really? Another crowd scene. I Okay. <laughs> okay, sure. I'll do a crowd scene. You know, it's yeah. not like a can I do a crowd scene? Oh my gosh, how am I going to do a crowd scene? It's more like, oh, it's a nightmare to do a crowd scene, and you're not paying enough for that. But <laughs> funny, <you know? laughs> I don't know. I don't That's know. Good point. <laughs> yeah, because like definitely like this that last job I had freelancing before coming down here. And I don't know if it was experimenting, I guess you could call it that, but it was like finding shortcuts. Just finding the fastest shortcut. Just get the thing done. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, do you, you think, know. though, that it's like, you know. Do you think, though, that like money, like you said, you know, like it's crowd scene and you're not paying enough for that? Because I've definitely been in that case where I've been like, oh, man, you know, how many characters do you want in this stupid painting? But, uh,. You know, like, does it even matter about the money? Because I've also had jobs that pay really, really well, and I'll be in the middle of it, and I'll just be like, man, I just don't, I, don't, I want to do something else. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been there. That's for sure. Yeah, actually, that's true, because, like, um, yeah, some of the finest clients are the ones that actually just have a good idea, and they hire you to yeah. do good. As a, and at least you know the final product's going to be good. Like, I... Um, I used to do comics for this magazine called Devastator, and um, they were so fun to work for. They're like a modern, like, version. They were temporarily like a modern version of Mad Magazine, and so it was just these yeah. comic strips, you know, and they were one and done, and really, like, the writers were hilarious. Um, and so, like, any time I, I, I would work for them for close to, like, nothing comparatively to what I get paid. For most, for most clients, and just because I, I really enjoyed it, like, and I really believed in what they were doing and putting out, um, and it's weird because I had more fun doing those than like when you know like if Merrill Lynch wanted like some boring illustration of stock traders or something, you know, um, in yeah. those cases of like, okay, you're paying really well, but this is like I have no interest in stock trading, you know, I should. Probably. <laughs> but, uh. Yeah. One of my funnest jobs, though, was from one of the, the highest paychecks I ever made. And it was for um, Lamborghini for their magazine. And uh, they said, we have this idea for, um, like, action sports, extreme sports, whatever lame buzzword you want to use kind of thing, in the future. What is what is like surfing look like in the future? What does skateboarding look like? Blah blah blah, and go. And all I did, I it was so uncomfortable in a way though, because the whole time I was like, God, I'm getting really far in this project, and they're not saying anything. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, oh God, the deadline's coming. I just got to keep going and finish this. And then I turned everything in, got got no revisions, and they were like, thanks, these are awesome, and then yeah. and then sent my check, <laughs> you know. That's unbelievable. That's but, awesome. Yeah, that's a that was a very rare client. <laughs> but there was even with that, um, I I couldn't enjoy it a whole lot because of that anxiety of like, man, I have I'm I've like I, I can't remember how many pieces there were, 
Um, but uh, it's like six, six to eight. So I don't know. We'll just say six or seven. Um, and uh, you know, they're pretty big. Like like a couple were double page spreads and everything. And I was like, God, these are done. <laughs> you know, they haven't said anything yet. Man, I'm gonna have to redo all this stuff because you know. Yeah, uh, got to make that deadline. I just, I don't know, got lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and that is the sad thing is like you do it for long enough, and you have enough clients like say like make the logo bigger or you know like take this part that's beautiful and just destroy it, you know, or take the focal point and turn it upside down and screw up your composition. Yeah. You have enough of that that like even the good clients, you still have that like. It's almost like PTSD, <laughs> where it's like, which, by the way, I understand, like, um, you know, there, there are younger illustrators who might hear this and just be like, stop complaining, dude, you have work, you know? And I get, <laughs> like, that I totally get, because when I started, I just wanted anything that was drawing, you know? And right. Yeah. be a good way to start, you know? But, um, but it's like, you do kind of end up kind of having this, like, fear of, like, the other shoe dropping and the client being like, okay... Now I'm gonna say a stupid thing that you should do, <laughs> like, and even if they don't, you're still just kind of like tra traumatized the whole time. Like, when's it gonna happen? Yeah, you're gonna ask for the revision. Yeah, on the, oh man, on the, the opposite side of working for Lamborghini, at the same time I was working for uh, a very well-known kids book publisher. I probably shouldn't say who they are because of what I'm gonna say, but. Um, uh, it was a book. There was a character that was a heavy metal kid, and so I drew a heavy metal kid, and they didn't like him. Didn't couldn't really tell me why. So I drew another heavy metal kid. Didn't like him. So they had a little committee meeting, <laughs> and um, decided that well, he needs to look like Justin Bieber, because little girls, because <laughs> little girls like Justin Bieber. And I was like, you know, I was like, well, okay, but I'm, I'm going to tell you what. I mean, there's a character in the book that's a, a metal kid, and um, heavy metal and punk have been, you know, my bread and butter. <laughs> so, you know, this this is this book is geared towards like 12 to 13 year olds who like heavy metal. They don't like Justin Bieber, um, but. Uh, they wanted Justin Bieber, so so I spent uh, two weeks trying to get a Justin Bieber look-alike to pass, so it could go on with the book. Meanwhile, I'm no longer getting paid at this point because they don't really know what they want, and my contract was is kind of messed up because I didn't get to write it because it's a big a lot of big publishers. If you have your own contract, they're like, fine, we'll just go so somewhere else. Um, yeah. And so, and and I needed the work, unfortunately, at the time. And so, um, so I'm drawing Justin Bieber, and then finally, ah, that's not gonna work. Um, but make him kind of cute, this guy, you know. And so, and then, okay, finally got the 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 guy character nailed down. Well, there's this girl character in there too, and got to get her nailed down. She's a 12 year old character. And so I drew a bunch of that stuff, and she didn't look enough like whoever the pop Disney pop princess was at the time. And I was like, God, but this book is not. It's it's aimed at these like kind of rebellious like preteens and early teenagers. You know, they don't like this stuff. You know, I was that guy that this book is aimed at. You know, I was like, and you you hired the adult version of that guy. They don't want this. You know, and. Uh, Oh man, that that was such a nightmare. And uh, the art direction, one of the art directions. Okay, this is this is your kids' book publishers for you, folks. Is um, I drew her flat chested because she's twelve. I got I, I got an art direction that was, and it's it's still. I might have brought this up because no. it's like it's like one of the <laughs> funniest. And most disturbing art directions I've gotten, and from a major children's book publisher. I don't even know if you need to say it. <laughs> we are, um, I know. We already know it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you make her sexier? Seriously, a twelve-year-old. Twelve-year-old. Can you make her sexier? 
And and I wrote back. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to make a twelve year old sexy. <laughs> Because uh, it, it was really disturbing. You wanted one of them, like anime characters. Yeah, it was like really disturbing to me. Yeah, one of the anime characters. You can't tell if they're supposed to be twelve or or right. thirty five. Uh, yeah. And then I wonder, like, what lunatic is running the asylum there? You know. Well, and plus it was like, I was also shocked because it was like, there was like you know the art director, the editor, and uh, I guess probably an assistant or something assistant art director maybe or somebody, but they were all women. I was like, <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> you just said that? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was weird. But And it, and it paid um, not even a fraction of a fraction of what Lamborghini paid. Yeah. But, you know, Lamborghini's once in a lifetime. <laughs> Who knows, maybe it's... I've had trouble with that kind of thing. I'm sorry. Oh, um, go for it. I've had trouble with that. <laughs> I've had trouble with that kind of thing with uh, with some stuff in, in comics that I've done. With uh, I did this one book called Hong on the Range, which was kind of like based on this novel where it's like, it's kind of like the Wild West uh, in the future, but then like the main character was supposed to be like Chinese, you know? And then you make him Chinese, and then it's like, well, can you make him like less Chinese? But you make, you know what I mean? It's just like this whole level of like how far is like, you know what I mean? Going to be like racist Chinese, but it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, well, you know, just let me draw, dude. You know, it's just so stupid. You know, it's just and that was the same thing. Like that, that book was for like a big, like it was an animation company that was getting into comics. And that that was a complete one of those deals where it was like a board of directors looking at like our pages every, you know, week or whatever, and and you just couldn't satisfy them with anything. They were just like, I don't know what you guys say, people's <laughs> wives and their whoever whoever looked that week what was in there, and it was just ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, God, that, I know that the kind of stuff would come up too. It's like um, occasionally, because especially in kids' books, especially oh, yeah. especially nowadays. Um, you know, like when we were kids, it seemed like every character was white. But you know, now it's like you definitely have to, you know, you want to be inclusive to kids and stuff. Yeah. Uh, we are are in the melting pot, and uh, you know, but then it would still be like they want to anglophile like the Asian characters or or something like that. And I would just be like, it's like, okay, so you want these other races represented, but you then want me to go ahead and insult them. Yeah. In art because they don't represent. <laughs> Because it doesn't represent who they are, you know. It so represents the, some whitewash version. The education company I worked for had uh, its own color palette. I'm not going to name this education company, but each race had their own color swatch. Oh wow! And Asian was like a really high percentage of yellow. It was so bad. It was like <laughs> the colors were terrible. For like the races, and then anytime you draw like one of the kids is not stereotypical, they'd be like, "Oh no 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 no, make the Asian kid holding like a calculator." <laughs> you know, oh, no, no, the black the black kid's got to be his friend, and you're like, "Wait, but you, I thought you guys wanted to be inclusive. That you're an education company, you know, you're educating more than just white kids, right? I mean, come on." And they're like, "No no no." You, you, just stick with the stereotypes and make sure you have one of everyone. <laughs> yeah, and, and that swatch over that swatch over the that just says twelve on it. We want you to put that on a couple of the characters because that makes them sexy. <laughs> that's our that's our sexy swatch. Uh, the the sexy twelve year old swatch? Yeah. That's that's a creepy one. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> so I don't know who who's listening or watching, but these are basic this is basically the stuff that makes you just like face palm and want to do your own stuff. <laughs> and, and you know, I, I do want to qualify it. It's like this is totally our experiences. So like, you know, I'm sure there like there are books by like children, the education companies that some of us might even be mentioning. They're amazing. Um, and by maybe even the comic companies, they're amazing. The people working on it are probably having a great time. I just personally never really found that that thing where I was like, this is it, this is the thing, I've made it, I'm happy, I'm content. Um, 
And oddly enough, the only time I hit that thing is usually when I'm doing work that's the objective has nothing to do with money, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously there's long-term goals to make money at it. That would be cool. But well, we have to make money, so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I should also say, like, there's books that I worked on and stuff that, that I did like, and I did like the art direction, and I did like the, you know, the things. I mean, I, I should put a caveat out there that um, most of the time that's because they defer to my expertise. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of like thumbprinting all over the place, but um, but you know, I mean, we've all worked for publishers. A lot of times, you, like you can do an amazing book or a project for one publisher, and within that same publishing house, you're dealing with this kind of like veiled racist stuff or make the twelve year old sexy kind of stuff like that. Because a lot of times, there's like different departments and different teams on different books and yep. stuff too. But yeah. Unfortunately, it seems to to defer more towards the kind of horror stories we're talking about than than like the good stuff. But I mean, I guess everything good is rare. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't I don't know if it's that way for everybody. It's just yeah. been like my my experience. I mean, there's obviously people who like make their career, and I've always kind of wondered that. Like, how do they get into that and be like, this is this is my thing? And I'm totally good doing this and be happy because I've never been able to do that for some reason. Yeah. Um, especially working for somebody else, you know. Yeah. But there are people, you know, that at least from the outside they seem to be that way. Yeah. Um, I don't know though. Yeah, I, I mean, like. I remember that. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was just gonna say I remember, I remember that documentary with like Drew Struzan, and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's all the horror stories of, like, the movie companies and all this stuff. But, you know, like, with Drew Struzan, like, you know, especially him, you never really see anything but his, like, professional work, you know. Even, like, on his website for a long time, it was just that. And then, um, then like, some personal stuff started popping up. And then, you know, like, in the documentary about him, he, like, went into talking about, more of that stuff, and it was just so weird to like hear it because I just always thought, well, that he's just he's the one guy, <laughs> you know, that's totally he's got the great job and and he and he loves what he does. But even him, he seems to want to like do something other than than what he's doing, which was just like just blew my mind. I'm like, what the hell, you know? If he's not happy. Who's happy? You know? <laughs> right. Talk. Yeah, I, remember, I do remember him talking about that. Like, he's yeah. like, yeah, I got to do this job, but you know. You gotta listen to other people, and it's taken away from from the art that that matters. <laughs> well, because the side yeah. we're not seeing is the side where they're like, okay, that there is Harrison Ford. You need to put his face like this large <laughs> in the composition. Like contractually, his face has to be like fifty percent of the poster, and then that's you know this actor, and so they have to be thirty percent. You know those little okay. like. You know, but then I, I'm sure there's personalities that like really enjoy that, like the challenge of it or whatever. Um, I mean, I did for a while, and there have been jobs where I really dug it, and it did force me to explore. Like, I don't even know if I like crowd scenes, for instance. I, I don't know if I would have really tackled crowd scenes had it not been for a bunch of freelance jobs that were like, yeah, we want like like a, a block party that's going to be, and it, it's a writer's <laughs> block, so it's all the writers like, on the planet that are famous, like, having a barbecue on a street. And I'm yeah. like, so how many writers are we talking? I don't know, put, like, 50 or so. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know if I've done that before. Oh did you ever... I'm sure, Jeff, because you're, you're an old man like me, but um, <laughs> I don't know if, if you've seen it, Josh. I'm sure you have, but the Superman versus Muhammad Ali comic? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got that thing right around here somewhere. Yeah, the the crowd scene. Everybody in the crowd is recognizable, and they're real yeah. people. <laughs> Can you imagine doing like? I mean, that was Neil Adams. I guess he's a little crazy, but I know. Did he just? I mean, he must have just done that for fun. But I just, man, you just think there's got to be an art director somewhere just going like, "Come on," <laughs> just like waiting for that spread or something. I don't know. That had to have taken forever. Because it's yeah. just like, you know, like a hundred people or something and they're all famous oh, yeah. people. Yeah, and it's like people like <laughs> Kurt Vonnegut and stuff like that that at the time, right. like, like what comic, 
you know, because comics, kids predominantly read comics back then when that came out, not a, not like now. And it's yeah. like, it's like, <laughs> like Kurt Vonnegut. <laughs> what kid, what like, what 11-year-old or 10-year-old, like, knew who that was. And it's like George C. Scott, you know. And, um, I mean, I guess yeah. people knew George C. Scott back then, but... Uh, just like some of the people were, it was pretty surprising. I mean, it's cool, totally rad, but it's it's in retrospect, it's pretty. I don't know, it's pretty funny. I think like Alan Funt is in there, and you know, I don't yeah. know that like me and you probably know who Alan Funt is, but I don't know that that many pe other people do anymore. You know, I've totally bought that when I was a kid, like out of the newsstand, and you know, I don't remember if I like recognized anybody in that crowd back then. Yeah. You know, like now I realize it, and I think there's even like a little page that kind of has like a number, numbers on the heads where like you can see who's who. Yeah, there is. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Pretty wild. But that must take it forever. Yeah. There's somebody who was loving what he did. Yeah. I guess. Well, I mean, it was also a different. <laughs> Maybe. Different, um. Uh, I mean, you still hear about. I was about to romanticize. Well, it was a different time and all this stuff. But yeah. you, still, you still hear horror stories from back then. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like the famous quote from Jack Kirby, comics will break your heart. You yeah, know, that's and right. He's, and he's the king. <laughs> yeah. the, the part we're probably missing of the Neil Adams thing is just like the, the evil like person telling him, like, no, no, no. We want like 40 more famous, recognizable people. And he's like, dude, I just want to get done. <laughs> So I can work on my own stuff. <laughs> you can work on his continuity stuff. No, yes, you know, that is funny, though. I wonder if it was, like, his idea or was it somebody else's? And, and was he, like, you know, just digging it and putting everybody wanting it in there? Or was he, like, you know, was this somebody else's idea to be, like, put all these heads in there? And he's just like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? Yeah, see, yeah, that, yeah I wonder that kind of stuff, too, because, like, like, how many times have you had to do something? somebody for, you know, a client or whatever, and um, they give you an art direction that you think is dumb, and yeah. but, but your name is attached to it because it's a comic or, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever it is, but your name is attached to it, but it's yep. not your idea. And the general public doesn't know that and because, you know, I mean, so many times, you know, I mean, I've got friends who work for, like, the big two, and you hear from them, like, like the fans on, like, you know, I, I'm Newsarama or whatever the the site is. People are comic nerds are going to now. Um, just like talking so much shit about them, but then I'm hearing the real story from these people. Like, well, that's my editor wanted that, yeah. and I really wanted this. And you know, I'm like, well, that's a good idea. He's like, well, I tried, but nope, the editor or somebody else wanted something that <laughs> nobody else did. And, yeah, uh, and absolutely. As, the art, as the artist, you're the one who's got to take the heat. Your name is on it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and you know, like when I did comics, you know, it's like they're all under deadline, and a lot of times I'd get comics, and I wouldn't even get like the the full month. You know what I mean? It'd be like it'd already be behind by the time we got it, and then you know you're like just killing yourself to get it done, and you know you can't do the kind of work that circumstances, and then yeah. you pass it off to like an inker. He puts his whole take all over your art, you know what I mean? And yeah. then like when when cuz I re I totally remember, you know, getting like backlash like from that and just being like, ah, oh, you know, like well, if you could have saw the way it was like drawn maybe, you know, it just it's so frustrating, but yeah. you know, whatever. It was years <laughs> ago. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, I I'm still I still think about it cuz you know, this book graphic novel just came out. And I don't, you know, part of me hopes it doesn't come out in the United States. You know, I know it's in Europe, but part of me does because of that, because I didn't have the time to do the art that I wanted to. You know, and plus, they hired me for my style, and then when I started doing it, they wanted something completely different, but they wanted me to do it. You know, and at that yeah. point, at that point, I'd already spent the advance, you know, for bills or whatever, and so I was just kind of like locked in. You know. Yeah. And so I had yeah. to do it. And, uh, yeah, it's it's. I look at it and I'm like, God, who drew this? <laughs> yeah. I remember that too. Actually, um, going into a comic shop, you know, it's like it's sad to say, 
And like seeing uh, one of my covers that somebody inked, and it was like not recognizing it. You know what I mean? Just being like glancing at the books, and it's like another new book. And it, oh, wait a minute, that's my book. You know what I mean? And it's just <laughs> like oh, you know. Yeah. Just because it's like it's so changed. It's just so completely changed. Which I know that's not an editor changing your work, but I had a lot of trouble with the inkers because my style didn't really fit inkers. You know what I mean? They wanted like Jim Lee or something, and then I was like something weird. So like a lot of times I was like, oh, these inkers just don't do my stuff right. But you know. Yeah. Well, I can see uh, just looking at your stuff. I mean, I can see how how that would be the case. Like. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know. You should have had like Bill Sinkevitz or some somebody that, like more, <laughs> more, more artsy. That'd be cool. Um, because it just wasn't like that '90s image Jim Lee kind of stuff. And you know, and it makes me think of like Gene Colan. Um, he's like one of my favorite pencilers. Yeah. And and uh, but you look at his like I've got his book up in Portland, uh, his biography. I think it's called. Dark Shadows or something like that, and it, it's got some tagline, like um, painter with a pencil, I think, but anyway, um, it shows his original, uh, his original pencil pages, and, you know, I've got the Tomb of Draculas that he did, and um, yeah. some other comics, and like, like, I think, Howard the Duck, from what I remember, when he was working on that, though, there's a decent inker. But he wasn't as painterly with his pencil, you know, as he was on Dracula, Tomb of Dracula. And you just look at these pencils, and they're amazing. And and then right next to it will be some quote from him about how he just couldn't find an inker to to do his to that he was happy with because they just couldn't ink him. You know, yeah. it's like if uh, if technology was different, you know, that back then it, we probably would have just. I, I would have thought they would have just probably gone with the pencils and colored over that, you know, because the pencils, yeah, yeah, because so the pencils had, are amazing. Have you had the other experience of having somebody ink your work and make it better? <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> it's like, oh wow, this guy's way good. No, I had, I never. <laughs> Maybe I'm just yeah. a dick, though. <laughs> but that's awesome. Like, if you found. There was I think that's the thing, like, these experiences we've had, maybe we just never ended up with the right yeah. collaborators or something, because I'm sure if you if you were, like, a penciler and you found an inker who made your work better, like, that's probably a good thing, yeah. you know? It's just, like, how do you yeah. find that team, you know? Because <laughs> I've never been you know, that kind of team player, you know? Yeah. You know, actually, I was going to say, that this is kind of like what you're talking about, because I, I did have an inker that inked for me, when I was kind of like doing like indie books and stuff, and I did this one book called The Dead, and um, there was this one guy named Jason Moore, and he he broke into like Marvel and worked in Marvel and stuff like that later on. But like when he inked like the these covers I did for this book called The Dead, um, we were just totally unknown, and I don't even know what I was getting paid, like maybe like fifteen bucks a page or something back <laughs> then, you know. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, but I was pouring my heart and soul into it because that's like when you're going for it, you know. What I mean, you're gonna like, you're gonna make it at that point. And uh, he inked some of my covers and and did actually ink like, you know what I mean? Like he inked like better than I I could have inked it myself. You know what I mean? He was like really awesome. And I remember when I got on uh, like I was on this book called Doom 2099 and. Um, like on the first book when we got it, we, we were like it was like super late, you know. It's like the, the the previous penciling team and everything had left, and so they were all kind of like up against the wall. I think that's kind of how I got in it. And so we didn't have any time, and so like I was just getting like these pages, and I had to like farm them out to these different anchors. And so like I got to ha work with Jason on on some of those. And it was funny because it's like I was like, oh my god, he's like, you know, this is this is the guy, this is the guy that's gonna make it work, you know what I mean? And then he was like, when he, the pages came back, they they didn't, they looked kind of like everybody else's pages, you know what I mean? And they, and they weren't like as impressive. And you know, and it was just like the thing was is like we were we were just under such like tight deadlines. He was under the same kind of deadline I was. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was just cranking them out as fast as they could do them. I was just cranking them out as fast as they could. You know what I mean? And so, like, we still couldn't do the good work because we just were, like, in that situation of just, you know, 
Yeah. Even though like he was capable of it, and I was capable of it, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's like it, it is different when you're all under the pressure cooker, you know. Like it, it, yeah. it's you know, it's like there's the other problem on the polar opposite side, like when you're because we were talking about like art for art's sake, but we're like you know, I remember when yeah. I used to try personal projects, and this is like ten or fifteen years ago. Um, I like one of the things that stopped me from doing comics was just being way too like precious and expecting like perfection. So I just like rework like the same page like over and over again and be like, it's just not good enough. It's just not good enough. Um, and then there's this point I think in art school where it just clicked for me where I was just like, oh, like nobody really knows what they're doing. <laughs> like, and like people just get good by doing, <laughs> you know. And that's where you just kind of like. And so it's like weird. It's like on one hand, you can't have too tight of deadlines. On the other, especially with personal work, if you don't give yourself deadlines, you could rework and noodle the same thing to death. And you know, by the end of your life, end up with a great painting, but maybe it's just one, and that would kind of suck. So I don't know. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I I agree with that. I I had a real problem with that. Just wanting everything to be too damn perfect just you know like to me like even in like maybe my 30s I feel like I was like that and it just it just stunted I feel like it just stunted my growth because I was just trying to I was just always trying to be like too too good you know what I mean everything had to be the best you know and I could never get anything done because I was too damn busy making it you know perfect and you know it just it just ate itself in a way you know yeah. At some point, you gotta like release it. You gotta release it with the flaws, you know. Yeah, and I mean, like, at the what end about of the day, that? You you probably also, at least for me, I had the experience of like, what I find is it was actually a lot of the times a lot worse if I overdid it. Just like it, it was just like mm. I, I ended up in a worse situation because I was trying to be perfect, and it, it inevitably it never is, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. yeah, like, I think you're right, like, you know, at some point you just gotta let it go, or like, you know, and also just get more seasoned and learn, like, okay, this is good, this will work, you know, I don't know. <laughs> when did you get kind of, because it took me a long time to get over that, and you said you got over it kind of like in art school, I mean, well, what was like the thing that kind of like pushed you over that hump, you know, because uh -huh. sometimes it still kind of gets me a little bit, especially with art, it doesn't, not so much with like anything else I do, but. With art, sometimes I'll well, start looking at it, going like, "Oh, it's not good enough. This isn't good enough. Nothing's good enough." You know. Well, I still have those moments. I mean, I don't think those go away because every once in a while, you know, especially like if I see somebody, like somebody who always sends me into a, a spiral with that kind of thing is Chris Ware. Like anytime I read a Chris Ware book, I'm just like, "Why am I even doing comics?" And then that's just perfect at doing comics. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, or like, or you look at like Jeff Smith, and it's like. He, He's just excellent at like storytelling and his line weights and just there's certain guys in different classifications of comics that just nailed it and you know it can be kind of crippling if you like you know um, but 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 I think for me like the thing in art school that was stifling me and making me kind of overwork stuff like that just that that stopped me was like I just kind of like it it was actually just the it was about the time that the Zarek was out, and I was just like, I want to try for the Zarek, but I've never made a comic, like a full comic in my life. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I made a bunch of crappy like, comics when I was a kid, but like a as a young adult, I just would tear pages up, and I just like, I would feel like, oh, this sucks. I'll, I'll do it when I'm good. And um, I it just dawned on me that, um, you know, I I'm never really going to get to that magical point of like, knowing how to do it until I just tackle it and finish something. And I think then when I finished it and submitted it, and like weirdly enough, like I look back at what I submitted and it wasn't that great, honestly. <laughs> um, but I got it. I got the grant. And I was just like, okay, well, that's, I guess, how people do that stuff. You know, it's like, it's just that, I don't know. So I think that helped me get over the hurdle. And then I realized, like, well, I got a lot better after that issue. So I'll probably get yeah. a lot better after the next one, you know. But I'm still not yeah. as fast as I'd like to be. I'm still, it still takes, like, way too long, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. 
Uh, that's I, pretty I, cool. I didn't know that you won the. Uh, oh, really? What we were saying. Oh, I was just. Well, I was just gonna say. Okay. <laughs> I think there's a delay. Yeah. Um, I didn't know you won the uh, the Zarek grant, but go ahead and just finish out what you were saying there. Oh yeah, I was just saying like a, a, it was just kind of finishing it off, but I was just saying like I, I'm I'm still looking for that person who has it figured out and has like a really quick style that's not a labor. Because uh, yeah. like everybody I've met who I think like is gonna just be like, oh this is you know this this is nothing, it's not hard work. They labor over it too, and their style will look all loose and fun, and then I see them laboring over roughs and refining and just. I mean, I haven't really met a lot of people who are, who are well, you know, any good who, like, basically have an easy time of it, <laughs> you know? Like, I don't know. Have, have no, you met anybody who's just, like, super quick and super good and, like, just no sweat when they work on stuff? <laughs> no, I, I haven't, actually. It always seems like, like you think that they're going to be that way. And then when you actually meet them, they go through all the same shit I'm going through all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, like, you know, I, I'm still on the lookout for that person. I want to learn their secret and just figure that out. You know? But what about, like, what about you? You said, yeah. you, you said you struggle with letting go, but you kick out, like, tons of work. Like, I mean, so you must have, like, a pretty, like, what's your trick to kind of go, okay, this is time. I think that I think it's like now I do. Um, like when when I really had problems with this, um, it was kind of like before. And like what what really changed it for me was actually the internet. Um, well, I mean it kind of changed when I was in comics because you had to put that out. But you know it's funny. Like when I was doing comics, I was kind of like. Um, like you guys in a way where it's like I always was like well this is just comics this is just work and I'm doing my own personal work over here you know what I mean? yeah. and so like I would kind of like disconnect myself from that stuff and say like well this is the important stuff but but like with my so called important stuff was like the stuff I could never get done because I was always redoing it and like you said you know nothing was ever good enough yeah, that's but like what starts. kind of changed it for me was when I, like, but what kind of changed it for me was like um, when I started selling art online, when I started selling sketch cards, you know, um, yeah. it's like I needed art done to make money, and I was still, you know, it, there wasn't like an art director telling me like, no, draw it this way, do it that way, or even telling me that you got to get this done by by a certain time. It was more like, you know, I could paint whatever I wanted to, I could make it as good as I wanted. Um, it was up to me. But it, it was like I needed it done to sell. That was like the only requirement. And I think that like, you know, once I started doing that and selling everything that I did, it just kind of broke that habit in me of just not finishing stuff, you know. So that's that's kind of what changed it with me. Um, and for a long time I was like completely happy. Uh, and I still am kind of just, you know, just painting and selling stuff, you know. Yeah. So. It's awesome. But I think it it was a yeah it was a good thing and I think it it kind of you know it enabled me to do other stuff even though like you know with comics I, I still have this problem where I can't get them done because I have started comics you know and stuff since then and you know I start a web comic and I'll do it for a little while and I'll quit on it and you know what I mean so that never fixed that but um I don't know. With my stop motion, I feel like I'm on a roll right now, <laughs> so I'm like, maybe this is fixed. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> but it's so different. I think it's just so different. You know, I don't have the same hang-ups with that as I do with my art. You know, well, everybody, Jack Kirby, Frank Rosetta, you know, <laughs> generations of artists on my shoulders with every line I do. You know, yeah, I, think uh, I, do. <laughs> I wonder if it's because stop motion is something that you haven't done for. For a job, it might be. so so it turns out that it's it's like <laughs> pure joy because it is art for art's sake, and you don't have to follow the rules because you haven't done it for a living, and so you don't have that baggage or, you know what I mean, like. Mm -hmm. So I think I think it is because I, I I know when I started doing it like a few a, year, a few years back, you know whatever, I like right out of the gate I was just like super 
into it, and I just was like learning and learning and you know making puppets and figuring it all out, and and then I kind of hit a little bit of a wall where I was just like started to think it wasn't good enough, which was is like the death of me when I think that. You know, when I start to think it's not good enough, that's the end of the project yeah. if I let that take over. And um, I kind of did a little bit, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I, I think like since then, you know, kind of coming back into like art again and painting, and it's just like, I don't know, I, I think I'm, I'm getting more so I can spot it, like when it starts happening and just be like, and just block it out of my mind where it's like, if it's not good enough, it's at least it's done. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's kind of more my my thing now, where it's like maybe it's not good enough, but it's like I, I just want it done. I just want to see it. I want to I want it to exist. Yeah. So. Oh, I totally know what you mean. Cause like, so I mean, you know, the whole everything that you know, the hundred days of comics and all that kind of stuff. And so this page that I'm inking right now. You know, because I there were yeah. times when I thought like, well, I'm I'm gonna stop for three months and and just work on this, you know, that graphic novel to get it finished, and then, you know, shit hits the fan, then I couldn't do it, and then I got back to it, and then, you know, I I was off of it for like another three or four months, and and so now I'm working on something that I penciled a little over a year ago, and I'm yeah. inking, I'm inking that, and I'm looking at it, and I can see all the flaws because. I draw better now, but yeah, I'm I'm at the same same place you are now, where I'm like, well, I penciled it, it's done. It's better to get it done than you know spend another week drawing it again, because you know that's how much it would probably take because of commuting and work and stuff now. Well, so. and, and I actually, well, I actually admire that too, the the ability to like stick with something. Yeah. like that for so long, you know, like where you only have like a limited time, but you're just sticking in there. You're not like letting it get away. And that's like that, oh man, I don't know if I could do it, but it's like you're doing it, so that's awesome. I used to not be able to, and, but, you know, I mean, partially it's like set up where my whole YouTube channel has been set up because of this comic <laughs> that's not done. Right, you know? right. And so, and that was almost kind of by design because... You know, I mean, I think in the first uh, making comics video, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this YouTube thing so I'm held accountable to finish this fucking book, you know, <laughs> once and for yeah. all. So, you know, there's there's that. And then, you know, I guess because I have been doing it for so long, there's been so many false starts. I'm tired of, or not false starts on this, this time doing it, but just how much it's lagged. I just like, oh, I just want it done, you know. And uh, I, I I think doing the 100 Days of Making Comics stuff kind of got me out of that, like, oh, I've lost interest. You know, false start, move yeah. on to something else. And it just made me, I don't know, it's like a, a work ethic or, or something. So even if I have to take a break or even if I can't work on it as much as I want, um, I'm still going to work on it because I just want it done, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know, years and years of false starts and stuff like that haven't produced anything, so I've got to finish something that's my own instead of, you know, yay, finish a graphic novel that I'm not happy with, so i got to do something that's my own, that I like. Yeah. Or, yay, I made a 12-year-old look sexy for, because some lady <laughs> thought that 12-year-olds are sexy. I'm like, no, 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 I need to do my own stuff. I don't, you know, my name is on books that I'm not necessarily happy with and not because because yeah. of the art necessarily but because of the art direction or or maybe sometimes it is the art like we're talking about you know because there's no time um, so so yeah that's how I'm sticking with it you know I just got to do my own thing and I got more more stories to tell and here I am stuck on a book where I think I, I wrote the script two years ago yeah for this particular comic you know but so you know, I, I think you're bringing up, like, a really important point because it's, like, um, like I think there's a, there's, a, there's a deceptive cycle to, like, the perfectionism thing, and it's a good tendency because, like, we all get into art because we, like, like good stuff, right? So, like, we're trying to make good stuff, and then we're trying and trying and failing and failing, and, you, you know, like, that's how you grow is trying to do better. 
But at the same time, it's like if you wait till you have the perfect pencils to ink, any time you get to inking, you'll already have leveled up. Yeah. And then, like, you could end up going back and fixing the pencils, and then you go to inks, and you're like, wait, no, I can draw better now. And go back to pencils. It could just be a forever cycle on the same page, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, like, that's kind of what gets me over it. And then aside from that, like, I did, you know, I have grown as an artist, so I'm a little happier with my style than, than I was um, before. And I found stuff I like, you know? That's like, you know, um, yeah, <laughs> like said in the chat, uh, chipping away at the wood block. I was just talking about this on my YouTube. But, um, but yeah, like for me, it's been kind of a more recent thing too. Um, and I think it was when I took that burden of like having to make a living on the stuff I'm passionate about because the, 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 that weight of having to do it actually made me try to like cater or find shortcuts um, that just really kind of sucked. So I don't, I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I I don't know if I should even bring it back to that, but you know, like that's kind of the one thing I I think about. You know, I always come back to you with this whole art for art's sake thing. Is like, I wanna I wanna do it, but it's like. Or not even like I want to do it, but because I am doing what I want to do, but well, I threw it in there again. <laughs> but um, like <laughs> you know, it's just like I can't I can't go back to that situation where I'm working and doing it on the side because it doesn't fucking get done. You know what I mean? It drives me like bonkers. Yeah, so, I mean, like, this there's got to be some other. Yeah, there's got to be some other answer. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I would be happy with another answer too. I mean, like I, I, <laughs> I'm happy with having the, like, there's this weird thing, like, in management or whatever. Like, I have to take these like leadership courses, and they're kind of corny. But one of the things they talked about was like, um, like the three levels of the brain. Um, so people who've like studied the brain, like, talk about like the three levels of thought, and like the lowest level of thought. And it's literally like the lowest part of your brain is just survival, you know? And when you're in that lower level, you can't get to the second level of your brain, which is like processing information and and considering rationally. And then to even that higher level, which is like the top part of your brain, which is like more like dream thinking and um, problem solving instead of just considering problems and stuff. So like... For me, I feel like when I was freelancing, I was stuck in that like very lowest point where yeah. I was just thinking about like tomorrow I have to pay my bills and I don't know if I can pay my bills and I have to like get this many t-shirt designs to make this much money because otherwise I miss rents or whatever. And like yeah. now being, I'm not like quite at that highest level because again, a day job, even though I like my job, um, and, I'm, and I feel lucky to have my job. It's like I still, like, I mean, of course, I would love to make a living doing this. You know, <laughs> like that would be ideal. Um, but yeah. then I wonder too, like, if I did that. Well, I don't know. That kind of ties into the interview you just did with Jason Brubaker, right? Where he was talking about. Um, well, you could probably summarize it better, but he was talking about kind of ways that he keeps himself passionate about what he's doing, because he is one of those people who's kind of doing what he loves, you know? So, yeah. But he, he talked about, like, psychological tricks that he uses. It's really good you guys should listen to it. But, um, but yeah, it's just, he, he talked about, like, psychological tricks he uses to keep himself engaged and passionate about his work. And, um, I, I, you know, maybe that works. I don't, I don't really know. I'd, I'd love to be in a position to find out if it works, <laughs> you know? But uh, but I definitely know I don't want a freelance performance. That yeah. I know. <laughs> well, I, I I get that though. I I totally get that because it it can be a grind and like and I, I I've been in that situation like you you said where you know you're like freelancing and you're like the next or like what you're making this week pays the rent that is due at the end of the week and it's like all you all you're thinking about is just putting food on the table, keeping the roof over your head. Yeah, and that's. You got no other time, and there's no time to be bored or anything like that when you're like that. But you know, as things change, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Like, but 
like my thing is always like you know like I would always like whenever I would like sort of not make enough art I would go back to like uh, you know working as like a house painter and, and stuff like that and then that's the kind of job where you know I just always would feel like you know I just get no time which I'm sure you guys deal with the same thing like when you because you guys work all day long and then come home and only have a few hours for your comics yeah yeah so I don't know. That's that to me is like the part of it, you know, oh, is yeah. to do to do the art for art's sake, but to somehow still make money or make make your living doing it. That's like the riddle that I'm like just trying to figure out right now. The riddle of steel. Um, That's right, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah, I, the, something. I think I might have brought this up on a video like a year or so ago, but. Like there's, there's something about like being desperate and struggling to to make art for money. Um, you know, you've got the work, but you're desperate to get get it turned in before the rents due, and then the, you've got to worry about whether the clients can even pay on time, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. It's it makes it hard to make art good. <laughs> it makes it hard to make yeah. good art, I think. I mean, I think that kind of that kind of pain and stuff, it seems to, to make good great music. Yeah. But but like great art, it it doesn't. Because I think you're just you're not in it, you know? Um, whereas music I guess is is a uh, at least for me, um, it operates a little bit different, I think, in my brain. But I remember like being so like just bummed and working on that last graphic novel and trying to like meet this deadline for one of the paychecks because you know I got paid in chunks and stuff and um, and the pages just looked terrible because all I cared about was a finish not good not anything it's just I just they just need to be done yeah yeah well because in freelance like literally like so let's just hypothetically say like you get a job that's like a thousand dollars right and um, and like it's it's like a spot illustration or something for like a magazine, and well, not a spot that would be a pretty good paying spot, but you know it's like a spread or something or a full page that's a little closer. But um, so you do like a full page illustration, and it takes you eight hours. You need a pretty decent chunk of money there. If you do the full page illustration, it takes you a week, making a little less. If it takes you a month, you're making less than minimum wage. So it's like it's one of those things where, like, you know, it, you, time really is money in freelance, um, at, at pretty much anywhere still, but um, in freelance especially. So like, there there is that constant pressure. And the other thing is because for me, like, not being able to leave the workplace was a problem for me too. Because like, you now I'm with my own stuff that I'm passionate about, like this. I don't think that would be an issue, <laughs> but um, but with like freelance jobs, it was like you know if I was taking time off, I felt like kind of guilty because I'm like, well, I could work more and make more, you know, and then be a little more secure this month or whatever. And I have like good years doing it, but it's just I don't. Uh, like I said, I I feel like to get in that space, I guess that's where it would be really cool to be in a position where you're just making the stuff you want to make getting paid to do that because like you're not having to be in that lower part of your brain. In fact, like you're being paid to be engaged up here, you know, up at the top, right by my giant afro, you know? <laughs> like uh, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it is refreshing right now to be able to like do like just turn off. Yeah. And um, you know, from from working, which doesn't happen in freelancing. Like, turning off is almost impossible, it seems like, sometimes. And now, you know, doing doing this again, the Monkey Modern Friend Show, which is essentially right now, because who knows what's going to happen, pro you know, statistically nothing. Um, and, and yet I'm still doing it, you know, so it's art for art's sake. And then what will happen is I can almost guarantee it. Um, even though, like I already said, like I draw better than I do on this page now, but 
this page will someday get me a client. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, that's, like your own stuff's gonna get you a lot further, at least, at least with building a brand or a name. Like, you know, like even though I work as an art director and stuff, like if you like look me up online, you're not gonna find art director. You're gonna find my personal stuff, my portfolio. You know, so it's like I, I don't think, um, I just don't think like, yeah, if you wanna just get paid. I don't know. It's it's weird because like this is my argument against old me who was like you should get paid for everything you do. But if you're just aiming to get paid, like just you know get like a regular like major in something that's really profitable, <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> um, but you know if you want to make really cool art, you know then like if you're getting paid to do art but it's boring, then you should be working on your own stuff, you know, because like. I don't know, like, if I weren't working on my own stuff, I'd stagnate even in my workplace, you know? Because, like, it, it's just, like, I'd be feeling no passion for anything in, in like, art, you know? And that translates to even the dull stuff. You know? I don't know. Well, I mean, I think, you know, to just maybe put a cherry on top of this is, like, um, no matter what, doing art for art's sake is going to benefit you, whether you want to do your own art, make a living off of it, or use it to get clients, or just do it for, you know, maybe you, you work in finance and you just like art as a hobby, but um, I don't know. I just think art for art's sake is what pays off, and, like, just worrying about getting paid from it all the time, uh, that's the stuff that no one hires me for when I do that. Yeah. You know? I get hired for what I'm not thinking about getting paid. And then of course, then I work on their projects, and then all, that's all I think about is getting paid. But especially when it's like the, the we'll pay you in sixty days. Oh God, <laughs> I hate that so much. In, in kids' books, it was ninety days. Ninety, yep. Yeah. yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, <laughs> real good. <laughs> so anyway. I was just looking at, I was just like glancing over at the chat, and I saw a Samurai Ox said, "I'm not even aware that people make money doing art," and I was just like, I just like struck me because like Samurai Ox has ran like six Kickstarters, and they've all funded, so he's the one who's making art money. <laughs> That's right. And Adam Lore says money ruins art. I don't know about that. It's just to me, it's like it, it's. You know, it's just, it's always, it's like this puzzle that you got to figure out. Yeah. It's like you figured out how to, like, make it freelance, and now it's like, now now we got to figure out how to make it work on our own stuff. And it's like, there's examples. I mean, Brubaker's one of them, you know. It's, I don't, you know, there's yep. people out there that are, that are making it work, so it's possible. Yeah, know? and I mean, you know, just reverse engineer it a little bit. How come he's making money off his own stuff? Because he did it. He did his own stuff, <laughs> you know. Well, you're definitely upping the. That's a good like, point. You know, because if you're not doing your own stuff, then like you're just gonna be doing other people's stuff. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know. Yeah, and I mean, really, you got to be passionate about working on other people's stuff to kind of get attention to work on more people's other stuff. So you might as well work on your own stuff because you get you get hired off of the stuff that looks good because you usually you're passionate about that stuff. Yeah. In the chat, uh, Samurai, Samurai Ox, is that pronounced? Samurai, right? Samurai Ox. I am just sucking at pronunciation today, but uh, he said pyramid schemes, and that just reminded me of this funny story where um, I once had a roommate who got stuck in a pyramid scheme, and he tried to pitch it to me as, it's not a pyramid, it's a point that has legs. <laughs> And I'm like, <laughs> it for him. like so it kind of looks like this. And I swear Amway is on the level. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I mean, what do you guys do to do art? I mean, would you go to the point of, like, you know, like point break, you know? You're like robbing banks so you could have the endless summer. Yeah, man. Is, is there like a? <laughs> I'll, just, I'll go surf. 
I'll go surf and rob. <laughs> um, I love. If surfing. you came across something that like where you questioned your your morals with, though, so, would you? <laughs> I don't know how to. Um, I can't. I think I know what you mean, but there's there's very little that could would get me to stop. Yeah. Doing this. Um, okay. I've had relationships where it's been like, well, uh, you work on comics. Uh, that's all you do. Like, yep. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and you're saying that with your nose in the air. And, like, you smelt a fart, but then you get, get out of here. You know, I... So, I mean, there's definitely been relationships ruined because of comics. And I would not stop doing comics. Yeah. Or, no or art in general, because, you know, the, if I had more time, I'd be back to painting again. Too, but so art in general, yeah, never stop. Yeah, I think um, that's another thing. Like you know, like there, especially like now, less less so because my my circle of friends are mostly artists, which is a great thing. But I think when I was younger and starting, um, it was one of those things where, you know, like. Friends would be out partying or something, and I'd have to stay at my house and do an overnight, pull an overnighter to like, you know, get hit a deadline to, to get into free nights and stuff. So, you know, there were just like there were sacrifices in that level too, where it's just like, you know, you're taking it's time and taking time is sacrifice. So it's like, I think because I've got this comic addiction, I don't know. I I honestly do think it's kind of an addiction, like the comic. <laughs> But um, so it would take a lot to get me to kick this habit. A lot. <laughs> yeah. What about you? Like, what would it take, Jeff, to like convince you to stop making your stop motion? Because like, <laughs> to me, like, even watching like your videos where where you've got like the eyes and they got stuck because the clay dried, and, like, and you have to replace yeah. stuff. I'm just like, it sounds like just tedious, like, and painful. But there's something, you know, the product must, you must kind of have a love for it, you know? Like, because, like, I think, I don't know, how would you, what would make you quit it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do. I, I, it's like, you know, to me it's almost like I'm getting a chance to, like, make my movie, which is, like, that's really what I wanted my, all my comic work to be. So it's like there's just no way, like, now that I'm stopping. Um, you know, like, in the past, I think, you know, just, I don't know, there's just been, you know, like, the pressures of, like, making a living and stuff, you know, yeah. get in the way, and, like, you know, and then you get down on it and stuff, but I, I don't know, like, this time, I just, I feel like, and that's the thing is, you never really stop, you know what I mean, you quit for a while, or you get depressed or whatever, but then, yeah. eventually, you pick it up again, you start doing it again, so it's, it's like, you know, we're all like that, because we're all kind of around the same age, and it's like, we're still freaking doing this stuff, it's like, God, just quit already, you know? Yeah, no. It would it would make my life so much easier if I had quit this a long time ago. <laughs> but but you know, I mean, it, it's this is gonna sound cheesy, so I'm gonna take this analogy even a step further. But it's not just like it, it's it's just who we are. It's not like asking a leopard, you know, like the cliche, ask a leopard to change its spots. It's like asking a leopard to turn into an elephant. That's just not gonna happen. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's impossible. It's just who we are, you know. So, um, for whatever reason, us artists, we're just better than the rest of the people in the world. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean. Uh, it's yeah, just so a, all it's we're just, saying is we're better than everyone in the universe. Look, the I don't want to. I don't want to be an elitist. Yeah. No. Definitely. But, but we are the tastemakers. Yeah. Um, of all tastes, but not saying that you know others can't have taste. Just their taste isn't as good as ours. <laughs> Not yeah. to be an elitist. Yeah. <laughs> Not to be an elitist, um, but to all the non artists who listen to but suck my fucking dick. <laughs> Sorry, I did that because it's on your channel, not mine. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I would have done that on my channel too. And then I would have regretted it later, just like I'll regret <laughs> that I said it on yours. I, uh, I don't hear anything. I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, but but all comedy aside, I just I just yeah, I really do think like it's just, it's just, 
who we are. You know, you just can't, you just can't stop. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and actually, like, so here's the weird thing. Like, even at my day job, which is like we work in a creative department, and some people from sales had to like stay in our department for a little bit while they were like refurbishing, like their department. And when they had to leave the creative department, they were really depressed because we are more fun. Now, <laughs> yeah. But to me, like, that's interesting because like it does feel restrained sometimes at work. But I have to remember, like. I'm, I might have a hard day at work, but at my job, I just drew a bunch of stuff and, like, got paid to do it and made choices about design and fonts. And, like, other people are, like, having to deal with, like, customers and all this crazy nonsense. And my challenge is, like, okay, I have this really short period of time to make something look cool. And, like, that is kind of fun. Like, it, it you know, it's just, I guess, you know, that's not my only fulfillment, you know. It's like it's a cool, it's a cool thing to do, but I think like what we're all getting at is like we want more because <laughs> we're selfish, horrible people, <laughs> right? I don't know. Well, sometimes I do like wonder like what kind of narcissist am I that I think that people are gonna care about what I put out into the world, and yet. I have this drive, like, I must put something out into the world, you know? Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's narcissism or it's, like, because I think a lot of us, like, I mean, almost every artist I know had some kind of, like, geekdom at some point in their life, and so maybe it's just that we're all, like, reaching out for people to look at our stuff, you know? I don't know. Well, I mean, to an extent, and this, this will sound cheesy, too, because anytime I get sincere, I think it sounds cheesy, but, um, it, it's, not to be sincere, but <laughs> what? Oh, uh, not to be sincere, but yeah. Like, yeah. No, I mean sometimes it because I, I joke around a lot and stuff. So sometimes I feel like when I'm sincere, people might think I'm joking. But um, like to an extent, kind of with what you said, is just using my comic as an example. You know, I've said before lots of times on videos that it's like this love letter to the stuff that I loved, yeah. and. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of like, well, Jim Colin's dead, you know, like Jack Kirby's dead. All these people who made the stuff that I love are gone. Yeah. And so it's it's almost like, you know, they didn't choose me to pick up the mantle, you know. And I'm sure other people are like, you don't have the skill to take up the mantle, and they'd probably be, <laughs> they'd probably be correct in saying that. But um, in some ex some way it's like I want to put the stuff I loved in the world because it's not being made anymore by the people that I loved making it. Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. And also you kind of, I mean, I think we all like hope to kind of do that for somebody else too. Where it's like, you know, I think we've all been rocked pretty hard by art. So it's like, that, that's, I think that does even ties back to the like art for art sake thing. It's like I think we've been moved and impacted by other artists and art, like, sure, like, you know, like there was a comic or even a stop motion animation that you saw that just blew your mind, and you're like, okay, I want to do that for someone, you know? I, I, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, there's got to be that. Or, or, like, once again, I think we'd all just have, like, quit and gone into accounting or something. You know, like, yeah. 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 Um, there's a couple of things in the comment comments that I wanted to, to oh, yeah. address. Um, because one we were bumming out Ox, and I I love Ox dearly. I, I I feel that he is like one of my little brothers or something, and um, you know I, I think I, I hope now we we've, we've kind of turned it around. Like we kind of gave the the bad and but the the good the good feeling I guess kind of outweighs it. You know of yeah. being of being an artist. Unfortunately, yes, the pay doesn't follow that good feeling a lot of times, but uh, it, it can. It's it's possible, you know, and we're just trying to figure it out. And we're trying to work on it. Um, so I don't want him to be discouraged, is is what I'm saying. And because if Ox is discouraged, some other nice person is going to be discouraged as well, and I don't want them to be discouraged. Um, the other thing is that uh, caught my eye was Adam Lore says I think in order to be a good artist, you have to have a big ego to some extent. You also have to be very critical of yourself to 
are uh, kind of two contradictory things. Yeah. Um, I think in order to be a good artist, you do have to have both those things, and I don't think they're as much contradictory as that makes you a strong artist. Yeah. Um, and so, and that's it. Those are the two ingredients to being a strong artist. Yeah. And so if you think of it that way, there's no contradictions at all. <laughs> because in order to be critical of yourself and to be honest with yourself, you have to be a strong person, you know? And so yeah. if anything this job has taught me, or this, this path that I've chosen, it's to be fucking goddamn Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It's like, like you have to, you have to be a little delusional to be in, to get into art because the odds are against. Yeah. You. Usually, you go to art school and there's always an art teacher who's like, three of you will make it, and you're, and it's exactly like art school confidential, where it's like, you know, the teacher says that, and all the students are thinking, I'm one of those three. I'm one yeah. of those. You know, we all yeah. must have thought that at some point, you know, to yeah. to pursue this silliness, but, but like. I, you know, I mean, to be even more encouraging, like, we're all still doing it, and I'm not doing it because i that's all I can do. It's, I'm just, I'm doing this because I sincerely, like, I, I still want it. Like, I still like it. I still am passionate about it. Um, but it's also, I, I think the other thing is all of us have been at it for a while, so it's kind of like water cooler conversation, you know? Like, yeah, sometimes... Definitely. The gig can suck, even though comparatively to other gigs, it's amazing. <laughs> you know, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's not not the easiest path, that's for sure. But it's the one we've chosen, and I, you know, I, I don't know. This is like what Jeff said. Um, anytime I try to get off of, get away from it, I just I feel good for about a week, and then and then I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. Or even that, you just get bored. It's like, well, nothing to do. May as well pick some, pick up a pencil and start oh, sketching. Yeah. You know? Oh man, there's a this one time I remember um, a lot of clients and everything, and I was like, okay, I'm taking. I don't remember how long I took off, like a week or two. It yeah. was a lot, lot longer than I usually do. So it probably was two weeks. But um, I mean, even even like three days is a lot longer than I usually do. <laughs> but yeah. um. But at this point, whatever it was, it was it was like a long time compared to, and like I was watching TV and I was so fucking bored, and <laughs> and I, I was just like I can't believe people just do this all the time. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was like, there was cool stuff. Like I got to go skateboarding more often, and when I do that, like the world melts away, so that I don't think about art at all. But but it was just like the the day to day kind of mundane stuff. I was just like, how do people do this? Shit. <laughs> Like, like, make a YouTube video at least. Make something. You know? no, so, like, um, Kevin and I have had a few moments where they're, like, standing in front of my house and, like, looking at some of my neighbors and just going, like, one of them's just, like, out, like, working on something in a project. And it's just, like, like or, or, or like, I overhear somebody talking about, like, the only thing they're talking about is, like, a TV show they watch, which we do, too. But it's, like, that's all they're talking about. And I, I always, like, we always wonder, like, just, like, so this is just, is that what most people do? Like, they just are, like, okay, I'm going to be creative by going home and, like, clearing the day so I can just relax. Yeah. Like, that just sounds so boring to me. And, I mean, but then I kind of envy it too. There, so that's the duality, I guess he was talking about, like the, the critical of yourself and the egotistical. The egotistical side's like, yeah, we're better because we make stuff, and there's a lot of people just consuming stuff. But then the critical side's like, well, it's probably a lot more relaxing and to just consume, <laughs> you know. But I don't think it's as fulfilling, you know. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Like, I I don't know if I. I think I'm like better just because I create compared oh, that to like, was, that was a other joke. people, right? I was, I was just joking around. But I mean, I, I think it's just um, I I because I, I knew guys like that. I knew a lot of guys like that painting, where they they go to work super early in the morning so they could have their afternoon off so that they could drink beer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was like their their off time. You know what I mean? And their on time was paint houses. And you know they liked it or they hated it or whatever everywhere in between. But yeah, they they really didn't have like a thing like I had, you know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't I don't know. 
that's just the difference in people or something, I guess. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. But I, I definitely wondered that myself. I like having a day of lost on it. You know, usually about a day yeah. a week is nice. But even that day, by the end of the day, I just don't feel that great. Like, whereas, like, when I make a comic page, I have a page to show for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which, once again, to the guy who just works to beer drink, like, you know, that probably sounds kind of silly, too, where they're like, you know what I got? I got a nice buzz, and I'm back in the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whereas, You work yeah, I mean, and you're stressed now, you know? So I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I, like to, I like to drink beer, too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but I mean, we do. You know, I guess we do need. Um, we do need those people because <laughs> if everybody made stuff, I don't know. You know, I don't know. We need someone to buy it. <laughs> Man, Adam Lohr in the chat he says, "I'd rather be in prison with a pencil and paper than to live like those people." <laughs> <laughs> that guy's intense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easy, dude. <laughs> we haven't really discussed prison as an option to make art. That's so funny because I remember like my buddy Sean used to always say stuff like that, like yeah. he was in prison, or like he used to talk about like go on a reality show. If I was like on a reality show, like where people were getting kicked off. I then I just used that time to make a comic. <laughs> <laughs> so I just went to the end so I could get my comic done. <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty good. <laughs> I think the second show angle looks good, man. Right. I think that we do kind of think of it a little bit different than a lot of people do, though. Because I, I've always looked at it kind of like that too, where you know, you you like build up this like the off time, or you build up your money so that you can have the time off to do whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like when I was working painting a lot, I used to really get pissed off, like when I'd have to do like overtime or work on the weekends and stuff. Because it was like taking away the little bit of time I had, you know what I mean? Because I didn't oh, have yeah. any time, but I had that little bit. And you know, and people would they, like, you know, a lot of the guys I'd work with would just be like, you know, well, what do you want to do? Just go home and play with your kid or something. And even that, even if it was just like that, it's like, yeah, I'd rather do that than I don't know. It's just yeah. a different mindset, you know? Yeah. Because they don't have they don't have nothing to do when they get home. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Yeah, it's 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 weird to wait to die. <laughs> oh man! Oh, that's such a good line. I feel like that. How long have we been at it? Because that almost feels like a, a good one. Uh, it's eleven oh five here, so we've been going for at least an hour and a half. Yeah, we whipped this this horse till he's dead. Yeah. I, 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 well, I just feel like that's such a good line to end it on. <laughs> like, <laughs> so no, either make art or live life till you're dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we end it, though, um, I want to tell everybody about the mailing list real quick. <laughs> you guys should sign up for the mailing list um, because the show rotates, and just like this week, it was on Joss's channel, which is kind of the unusual channel to be on. And if you sign up for the mailing list, uh, I just email you before the show starts every week because it's on every week at Wednesday at uh, uh, what time are we on? Nine or ten? Well, whatever. Uh, yeah, and, nine, uh, nine, 9 p.m. Pacific. So yeah, yeah. ten p.m. Mountain or whatever, and on so on. But anyway, it's just good to sign up for the mailing list so you don't miss the show. And that's it. And you can go ahead. Yeah, and uh, we'll make sure that it's in the uh, description. For this video, under yeah, there's a link underneath. All right, Josh, would you like to sing, yes. us, sing us out? Uh, so make sure you guys check out Cirqueworks because that's who I'm subbing in for, and he's awesome. Scott is amazing for letting me sub in, and uh, thanks for uh, you know making me part of this for a bit. It's fun. Um, so anyhow, uh, that's it. Thanks, and they will see you guys next week. Show up sometimes. I might not. All right. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Later. <laughs>